Over the past few weeks, $6.4 trillion has been wiped out of the global stock market. So what happened to the stock market? In this video, I'm gonna show you what happened, but more importantly, I'm gonna show you what's about to happen. So make sure you watch till the end because this could make the difference between you making a ton of money over the next few months or losing a ton of money. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Stock Curry. I'm a former Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley investment banker, and I've been trading for over 25 years. The $6.4 trillion stock wipeout has traders fearing that the great unwind is just starting. The magnificent seven losses alone neared $3 trillion over the past few weeks. And the huge $6.4 trillion global stock market meltdown could just be the start. So what happened? Well, just like in 1987 and 2008, it all started in Asia. And this time it started in Japan. Last week, Japanese stocks crashed in the biggest one day drop since 1987 as the global market route intensified. Subscribers of this channel know that I warned that this market was looking a lot like 1987 about three months ago, and in fact, it just happened again. So why did the Japanese market sell off and how did this affect the US stock market? Most analysts said neither interest rate expectations nor economic data could explain the severity of the sell-off. The rapid move in the Japanese yen is putting downward pressure on Japanese equities, but it's also driving an unwind of a major carry trade. Investors had leveraged up by borrowing in yen to buy other assets, chiefly US tech stocks. We are basically seeing a mass deleveraging or sell-off as investors sell assets in order to fund their losses. The reason investors are selling stocks in order to fund losses on stocks has to do with margin. Buying stocks on margin involves borrowing money from a broker to purchase securities or stocks. Investors use leverage when trading on margin to increase their position size or buy more stocks beyond what they could just afford with cash. Margin or borrowing money to buy stocks has fueled this massive rally in the stock market that we've seen over the past year and a half. And margin can amplify your profits, but it does come with a major risk. Purchasing stocks and margin also amplifies the effects of losses. Once you've purchased a stock or security on margin, you are required to keep a minimum amount of equity in your margin account. Equity is the market value of the securities in the account minus the margin loan amount. If the value of your stock decreases, causing your equity to fall below the maintenance margin, you receive a margin call. A margin call requires investors to increase the equity in the account by liquidating or selling stocks or depositing additional cash. And investors don't have additional cash, so they were forced to sell stocks. What started this? Well, about a month ago, major tech stocks such as Nvidia started to fall. And as those tech stocks started to fall, this caused losses in margin accounts, losses far greater than the actual value of the accounts. And traders were forced to sell stocks in order to make up for those losses. As investors sold stocks, this caused the stocks to go down even further. And as the stocks went down even further, this caused the losses to get even larger, which forced more people to sell. And that caused the prices to go down even further. And it was a snowball effect that caused a major and rapid sharp decline in stock prices, just like it did in 1987. Japanese stocks did rebound from their worst crash since 1987 last week, but the global markets are still mixed. And this is where it gets scary. 
If we overlay a chart of 2024 in blue on top of a chart of 2008, you can see that these charts line up almost perfectly. And right now, if we do continue to follow what we did in 2008, we are looking at about a two week rebound from the sell off before the real sell off begins. And that is why traders fear that the $6.4 trillion global stock market sell off so far could just be the start. So what caused stocks to start selling off in the first place? Well, it's a combination of the fact that valuations were too high or frothy as Warren Buffett likes to say, combined with the fact that earnings were starting to slow down. But more importantly, what really triggered it was the fact that it looks like the US might be starting a recession. And those fears were triggered when the jobs report came out. A sharp slowdown in US job growth boosted the unemployment rate to 4.3%. The increase in the unemployment rate from 4.1% in June marked the fourth straight monthly increase. As a result, stocks in Wall Street fell sharply. The dollar dropped to a four month low against a basket of currencies. US Treasury prices rose with the yield on the benchmark 10 year note falling to its lowest level since December. All of this is happening because for four months in a row now, the economy has continued to get worse. And now people are wondering if the US economy has reached a tipping point. Until recently, the US appeared to be heading for a soft landing, with inflation coming down while employment remained high and growth was steady. Events over the past few weeks, however, have undermined confidence in that outlook, with some economists raising the probability of a recession and others saying the Federal Reserve needs to cut interest rates more swiftly in order to starve off a recession. I've been saying this for the past few months that the Federal Reserve has never in the history of the United States raised interest rates without causing a recession. Despite that, a lot of people had this Goldilocks pipe dream that the Federal Reserve was going to cause the first ever soft landing in the history of the United States. Of course, history does not back that up. History almost always repeats itself, and history has shown us that every single time the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, it always causes a recession. Now, investors are starting to wake up to this reality. They're starting to realize, wait a second, maybe we were foolish in thinking that we could get the first ever soft landing in history. Maybe history will repeat itself, and maybe we are, in fact, going to get that recession after all. And now, the July jobs report has triggered the SOM rule. An uptick in unemployment has spurred the powerful recession indicator. What is the SOM rule and is it warning of a recession? The SOM rule states that when the three month moving average of the unemployment rate, that is an average that combines the rate of the three most recent months, rises by half a percentage point or more from its lowest level over the past 12 months, the US economy is in the beginning of a recession. You don't really have to understand what all that means. The real question is, does it work? Generally, it seems to. A look back over the past 50 years of economic data shows the rule has played out accurately 100% of the time with unemployment zooming up at the start of every downturn. If we look at a chart of the Psalms rules historical track record, the indicator was triggered early in every recession over the past 50 years and it was just triggered again. That means there is a strong probability that the United States is at the beginning of a recession. We're either in a recession already or we are about to enter a recession. And that is why traders are fearing that the stock market sell off could get much, much worse over the next few months.
Keep in mind that August is historically a green month in the market. And based upon the chart from 2008 and the overlay I just showed you, it does look like the next two weeks will be green. Stocks will rise over the next two weeks if history repeats itself. After that though, come September, that is historically one of the worst months in the year for the stock market. And that often is what triggers the major sell-off in stocks. Of course, it won't be a straight move up or down. Traders are betting on wild swings with the CPI print set to test the markets this week. The CPI or Consumer Price Index inflation data is set to be released on Wednesday at 8.30 a.m., about one hour before the markets open, and it is expecting to show a sharp increase over June. And with inflation expected to start picking back up again, this is causing a major problem for the Federal Reserve because the Federal Reserve has to keep interest rates high in order to get inflation down, but they have to keep interest rates low in order to spur economic growth and avoid a recession. So the Federal Reserve is kind of screwed right now. If inflation is going up at the same time the unemployment rate is going up, what does the Federal Reserve do? Do they keep interest rates high in order to get inflation down and cause the unemployment rate to get even worse? Or do they lower interest rates in order to lower the unemployment rate, but in turn cause inflation to get even worse? The Fed really doesn't have a good solution here. That said, a small U.S. inflation pickup for July probably will not derail a Fed rate cut in September. So the Federal Reserve is still widely expected to cut interest rates in September, but with the recent market volatility, we can expect a lot of swings up and down throughout the remainder of this week as that CPI, PPI, and other economic data comes in. Now, all of this volatility is causing major fears for traders, especially traders who have been trading for a long time. And those fears are showing up in something called the VIX or volatility index. The volatility index is a measure of how volatile or fearful stocks have become. And if we look at the volatility index this month, it is the highest it has been since both 2020 and 2008. Eight. The only two times the volatility index ever hit this high was 2020 and 2008, two of the largest crashes in the U.S. stock market in recent history. If you compare that to the 2022 bear market in orange, you will see that it was kind of a blip on the radar compared to we are today. So this is a major fear for investors that volatility and fear in stocks has increased to the highest levels it has been since two of the worst crashes in the stock market in recent memory. Now, I don't have time to explain volatility in depth in this video, but Fast Track to Trading Success members can go to the market psychology section and watch the videos on both volatility as well as how to trade in a bear market and the differences between that and a bull market. If you'd like to join the Fast Track to Trading Success and get these lessons on volatility and bear markets, you can do so at weprofit.io courses. That's weprofit.io courses.